BYU makes their 36th bowl appearance Friday at 2 p.m. when they take on Western Michigan in the Potato Bowl. Rod takes a break from the pre-bowl party in Boise to give us a preview. BYU fans had their fun tonight with the Battle of the Band. and Western Michigan meet on the blue turf. Who has the advantage? You have to look at the common opponent. Both teams played Northern Illinois. Of course, BYU lost to NIU, only scoring six points at home. Western Michigan beat NIU, scoring 28 points. So, should we put anything into that? I mean, I wish it meant something more. Uh, I don't think it does, but because uh, every, every, every game day is different, you know? Um, but I, it is unique that we're playing a team that you know, that we have a common opponent. You can watch them against the same players we played against in our last game. Uh, that's something that, that we can really draw on the common opponent. And our players know how, how um, what type of program and that uh, Western Michigan is a really good program and we have to be ready for that. It's all about the, uh, the execution, you know. Anybody can talk a good game. Anybody can put up 28 points the game before the game after. But the game's tomorrow. So it's like nobody cares what you did against Northern Illinois. Because now you got to do it against BYU. And he goes down. They're a good team. Um, really physical. They can run the ball. And so with this with this time that we have, I feel like we've been preparing really well for them. And hopefully these guys take a little bit of confidence in, in what we did against Northern and what we can do. But we still got to go do it. So neither team really wants to put any stock into that common opponent. But we will find out. Kickoff 2 p.m. in Boise. Rod Zundel, Sportsbeat. Thanks, Rod. Now to college hoops. Utah State off to a 9-2 start under first-year head coach Craig Smith. Could they keep it going in Houston? Looking for a statement win on the road against the undefeated and 21st-ranked Cougars. The Aggies own the first half, holding the Cougars to just 21 points. Dwayne Brown Jr. led the Aggies, 19.7 rebounds off the bench. Quinn Taylor had 14, including that poster dunk. Aggies led by as much as 13, led by 10 at the half, but the script would flip in the second half. Houston catches fire from three. The Aggies turn the ball over 17 times and get outscored by 20 in the second half. They end up falling by 10. You don't see this often anymore. A high school game in Magna between Mountain View and Cypress. Ooh. Oh. J.R. Hayes of Mountain View skies for the alley-oop and shatters the backboard. With the basket busted, they had to call the game with two minutes left. Cypress gets the win, but those in attendance, including that kid right there, will never forget seeing that. <laughs> Whoa, look at that. Nice. Oh, and now we have some sad news to report tonight. Former Weber State basketball coach Ronna Beglin has died. The Vernal native and former BYU player coached the Wildcats from 1991 to 1999. Led Weber State to three Big Sky titles and two of the biggest upsets in NCAA tournament history. 1995 over Michigan State and 1999 over North Carolina. He was 81 years old. BYU also lost a legend yesterday. Mel Hutchins has died. He led BYU to the 1951 NIT National Championship, then played seven years in the NBA, named NBA Rookie of the Year in 1952, an all-star four times. His number 14 jersey was retired by BYU in 2013. He was 90 years old. And as you look back on the history of basketball in the state, college basketball, those are two men that had a tremendous impact. His teams at BYU kind of laid the foundation. That's why there's so many seats at the Marriott Center was right. all that success they had through the years. And at Beglin, those two tournament wins were just, we still talk about it 20, 25 years later. So it's sad to see them go. Yeah. Thanks, JJ. Thanks. We'll be right back.